O'Hallan, Professor John O'Hallan, who's the Vice President for Teaching and Learning in UCC. Um, John, as many of you know, uh, used to be the head of the School of uh, Bees um, and has worked abroad in universities in Cardiff and in Maine. Uh, John has received the President's Prize for Teaching and he has um, honorary <coughs> membership of the Students' Union of Ireland for all his work there. He's also the director of the Quercus Talented Students Programme and he's the chair of the Green Campus Forum. Um, and as many people know that, uh, UCC was the first campus in the world to be awarded a green flag uh, several years ago. So, uh, without further ado, if I could ask John just to Thanks. open the conference. Thanks, Tom. Mark Paulin is with me on the green flag. <laughs> Teamwork. Um, and uh, our latest project there is to try and set up what I call the world's first green flag day. I'm saying this to Mark because there are now 83 campuses in 18 countries have a green flag. Tom, thanks for that. That's my e-portfolio, so that's why, in case you're wondering why Tom put that up there, um, if we click on that. First of all, can I say thank you, Tom? Can I say welcome to everybody? This is really another really important step in our journey. Um, I was down in the last few days in Kerry with the President, um, visiting a number of, uh, of our partners in education. But on Saturday, I was giving a presentation in uh, that very fine hotel, Sheen Falls, if you've ever been in there. Um, it's only medical graduates can go there, of course. Um, and I was there for the 30th anniversary of a medical reunion. Um, and Fiona's <laughs> here. Fiona was even with me. So Fiona, um, you won't see the same slides today, but Fiona made an important contribution also. Um, and what I share there, I suppose, is the journey that we've been on in terms of our education journey over 30 years, whatever length of time. It was 1979 I first started in UCC. And I was complimenting Mark at lunchtime um, how, as a steward of our, our, our estates and, and the leadership that he has shown. Um, despite all the strains that come on us in, in all the very difficult times which we've been through, we still have a fantastic campus. Uh, that all of us are proud of, I think, actually. Um, and I think that's Mark's leadership in that, uh, both in the external estate but the internal estate. To me, it makes me incredibly proud. Um, this is our new strategic plan. I suppose it's, it's again, pushing us a little bit further on to see where we might go. Um, when I was here in, in the 90s, well, I was here in the 70s, it was probably about 5,000 students. We've now 21 today. And I suppose what we're trying to do is to continue to build on that, that excellence and build on our heritage. And what's exciting for me, really, is what's been happening over the last few years with the collaboration between our office, Mark's office, AVMS and Ger Cully's team, that intersection between the place where I suppose we all teach and we all learn. Um, pedagogy is made up between space and technology and, and students um, and faculty all mixing around um, and trying different things. And the, the role that space um, plays in that is critical and we'll hear lots of other things as well like light and other things that I've been hearing about at lunchtime. I'm really looking forward to Stephen's presentation and then occasionally and I know Sarah will kill me but then occasionally you get these really surprises like Sarah Mulrooney and her team suddenly pop out who, who's one of our colleagues in the School of Architecture and suddenly says well why can't we do these things together and now Sarah's got a PhD student we've got master's students and then we've got the hub going on in the background and I suppose what we're all trying to do is to focus on the next generation and whatever those generation of learners might be whether the generation is here if you're a baby boomer that's fine too we we'll take you as a learner as well um, but it does require a different kind of approach and engagement, and that's what's exciting. Um, Tom reminded me, he said that, and I don't remember this, Tom, but uh, last April we had another workshop, and a lot of the students were or transition your students, and I'm going to see now how many people know this software, the transition your students were talking about streaks. Now, when I was going up streaks with something that happened at a match, usually that was rather rude and <laughs> didn't want to happen. Has anybody heard of the software called streaks? Okay, so while we use Snapchat and WeChat, they were using streaks, Tom, weren't they? Right? So I think streaks are a way, and I, I'm not 100% sure if that's a way of actually keeping something going. It's yeah. Kind of a streak. So what it points to is that the bridge sometimes is big, and the gap is sometimes big between the technological connections. I'm not saying technology solves everything. Of course it doesn't. But actually, if we're not even on the same pitch playing the game, or even in the same room, then that's incredibly, incredibly challenging. Um, and Instagram, and I know that... Those 30 year medical students all use Instagram for photographs, far too advanced for me. Um, but I suppose the reference point for us is our, our strategic plan. And I see Gemma here was who was responsible for developing some of that on the academic strategy. And in there we say we want to implement an academic strategy to deliver an outstanding student centred teaching and learning experience with a nude, responsive, research led curriculum at its core. In order to do that, then we need to do a number of things to deliver on that support our faculty, support flexibility, support technology and more importantly to support the kinds of staff that we want to do the exciting things. And I see Jeff Weaver here down here, who's done some fantastic works as well. So, you know, this is a very special place with some very special people. Um, last October, we called, I think, our first uh, 
meeting of this kind of scale, we started um, to try and spark some ideas. October 2016, Tom organized and his team the first Next Generation Spaces Seminar. And our own team we spoke with that, Bryony, Sarah, Ian Hutchinson, our students, Eugene Collette, Michael O'Sullivan. And I suppose what it began to do was to spark interest, let people see the possibilities of what might actually be possible when you start to change the, the, w the, dynamic, the way the dynamic actually works. Um, I was over in Paris two weeks ago at the Universities Association meeting, and one of the professors there from Paris was trying to design and use teaching in a different way. And I was saying this to Mark, that we can have all the ideas in the world about moving furniture around, doing all the things. But actually, the next person who comes into the room um, uh, wants to put it all back together again or reorganize it, really make significant challenges. So it's interesting you're all facing up this when I'm standing here. I mean, that's really not great. Um, and if you want to, I was teaching myself a couple of hours this morning. We just took the room with Sunday and we did all sorts of interesting things. And we had to put it all back together again. And what he said to me when he went in Paris, he started doing this. So on the first day, he arrived a half an hour early. So he organized all the furniture um, and you know, in circles and whatever he wanted to do. And that worked great. And then the second time was fine. But then the next time he discovered, of course, he, like all of us, including myself, was a few minutes late for his lecture. And he was worried because he ran in and said, God, I'm going to have to organize all the furniture. He didn't have to. The students had already done it. Um, and I suppose what that really points to me is let the students be partners in this learning, which we do in so many other ways. Let them be partners in that learning. And I think that flexibility would be absolutely fantastic. So what we captured here is a number of these kinds of activities that we've been doing across the institution from a basic space right through to a complex space. And the extent of which space is changing the pedagogy and influencing the pedagogy and influencing the dynamic nature of our learning. Not everybody would buy into this, and that's fine, actually. I'm not worried about that. I think what's really what I'm interested in is giving people the opportunity to engage in something interesting and experimental. Um, and then we've got virtual reality and... I'm always struck as a biologist that uh, the, the case control studies that have been done on, on first year biology classes, that if you do a virtual reality laboratory and an actual real laboratory, the outcomes of the students are n not distinguishable statistically. Um, beyond first year, I don't know. Um, and as we try to grow our student body, which we are going to do with 2,000 students over the next while, you know, we would, Mark and I and others will be having conversations is what might that space look like? To, should we build big things, small things, and so forth? So I'm really interested in what Stephen is going to say about that today um, and other matters as well. So we launched a call then, and over the last no summer, and in particular, Mark's team, the AVMS team led by Jerk Cully and, and Killian and, and John Fitzgerald and Colette and Hold and my own team did a fantastic job over the summer um, in terms of re um, looking at spaces. We had 23 applications for the next gen, and we funded nine of those and what we're trying to do we don't look we don't have lots of money but what we're trying to do is to align the things we're trying to do with where the resources are going to be deployed anyway and what we're trying to do is i'd ask you those of you that weren't successful you'd be a little bit patient we'll try and do the same again next time around and where we're going to do when i say we i mark and steve and others are going to do some significant work on refurbishment we we'll try and align them up so we can get the opportunity to develop some of those spaces so doing Quivine, doing Quivon, some of you will know down in, in Cork Gwivna in Dingle, that's one of the areas that's getting significant investment. Uh, Fernhurst, William Thompson House, the Dental Hospital, Centre Room, the AT Lab, Podden de Boule, uh, the Library Studio, the Orb Atrium, and so forth. So there are many examples, and if you haven't seen that pod, it's up in Q plus one. Um, UCC has proudly got the highest number of students with disability, ranging from learning disability right through to total amelia, um, which is a huge achievement for any organisation to have that universal design. These pods of people are sensory sensitive um, and really, really good. Um, although, anyway, I won't say we had an interesting experience a few minutes ago. Um, chairs then are, are the next level down, um, which is that you can actually have high back chairs so you can again eliminate noise and sound in a very simple way. Uh, they're about 600 euros, 6 to 800 euros each, something of that order. And Colette is, and, 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 and others have been leading the charge on this. Um, and Linda, of course, in you know, our disability service, who's, you know, disability service have been really fantastic in driving a lot of these initiatives. Over the left is Tom's latest um, uh, project, which is the, the Bull Studio. Um, and that's actually where each of us as faculty, students, and, and everybody can go in with your memory stick, um, put your memory stick into the machine, move back, and with one foot pedal, you can just record yourself all your slides, and you can just one touch of a button and pedal again, and just take your memory stick and you go if you want to prepare assessments or assignments and so forth. And, you know, I was really struck by Siobhan Cusack, our examinations officer, came down with me and she said, John, you know, that would be really quite nice to do information for students on examination halls and so forth. So this is, this is for everybody. And 
if we have to build more, then we'll try and build more than uh, whatever we need to be doing. I mean, and Clef has been so generous already, we can maybe not ask for any more space, but we can work something out more. And you know, lots and lots of examples of things going on here. And I'm just a person up the front telling the story. This wouldn't happen with a lot of real serious actors in the room here and a huge amount of collaboration that's been involved in that achievement. We've also set fairly uh, high standards in terms of minimum specifications in our lecturing space, albeit a classical lecture space. Uh, so AVMS and others have been working really hard over the last uh, number of months, um, and particularly over the summer months, to actually ensure that we actually um, increase the quality of the teaching space overall. One of the challenges I was faced with at the beginning when I started in this role over three and a half years ago, I went into rooms all enthusiastic about elect our tele-support teaching, and you know, people realistically said, John, okay, but the data projection doesn't work, this doesn't work, this doesn't work. And I get it. So we've gone back now, and this summer there were, I think, um, we've now got 23 lecture theatres were completely upgraded to a significant level with uh, variable desk height so you can bring a wheelchair in or you can stand it or you can adjust it, trackable cameras and the kinds of things that really you would expect, I suppose, in a modern university, but we've eventually caught up in supporting those, largely due to significant teamwork between all our offices, which I think is fantastic. And more recently, the open access computing area has been opened this week. Um, in addition, of course, then we're, we're linking that with research, and we secured funding to support a master's and a PhD student in, in, in transitioning to the hub. So what might happen in these kinds of teaching spaces? How might we capture that? How might we document that? How might we learn from that? And then use that to inform how we might use the hub in other areas. And again, that has leveraged fantastic opportunities because... We fund one PhD and one master's out of that, or there are two further masters in teaching and learning who are now going to look at a project in space. I think there are eight architectural students, and there are others. Um, so this has created a huge momentum in terms of trying to understand how and when and we might use this space. And I think that's really important, actually, and, and not to have a fixed view on it and, and actually see how it works out. And so as you will be familiar, this is the hub, or the, the, the plans for the hub. Um, which was the former medical building, and it's a very, very significant development being promoted in, in that area. But again, we want to inform that by research. We want to inform it by best practice and how we might use that particular kind of space. So I just want to conclude by saying that it's a really exciting time, and I think that um, we've come a long way. We have a lot more to do, um, and we will continue to invest on it. And for me, collaboration is key. Um, and I was out in China earlier this year, and... I was struck by, and you've heard, some of you might have heard me use this phrase before, but it resonates in my head when I was just preparing a few notes today. And it was a great phrase that said, if you want to go fast, you go alone. If you want to go far, you go together. Um, and I think we want to go far. We want our students to go far. We want to be ambitious, and we want to keep pushing it out. So I want to just say thank you to those who provided the leadership, Tom, Mark, John, Colette, Colette Jer, Killian, and their teams, because this wouldn't have been possible without any of you. And we have a lot done, but actually we have a lot more to do. So that today Tom has put a great program together to actually share some new things, but also maybe see some new possibilities. So it's going to be exciting. Korgardikas, welcome. I look forward to very much to hearing what's going to happen this afternoon. Thank you, Tom. Thank you.